Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Scott Brader. He says, I appreciate your sharing a wealth of knowledge and experience with us newbies. I am anxiously waiting to have my call sign appear in the ULS database so I can start pressing the push to talk key and begin my journey in this new hobby. So clearly he has just passed his technician license and is gathering equipment to get on the air. My question is about the test modes on the ATD878UV2+. That's a radio that's a modern one. I... Before we jump into answering Scott's question, I want to pay a special thank you to Thomas Johnson for being a very new patron on my Patreon. Uh, he uh, puts in a certain amount a month and that comes to become part of uh, channel funds. You too can become a patron by going to patreon.com slash ke0og and picking a method that works for you. I encourage people who get any tone radios to get them from Bridgecom Systems uh, in the USA. They are an authorized uh, retailer, but they also provide a lot of help via videos. You can call them up and get help uh, and so on. This is uh, far more service than you can get if you buy your D878UV from um, other, other vendors. Lots of vendors carry them, but uh, the but Bridgecom Systems will give you support for that. And I, uh, I don't get anything from them. I mean, I have gotten radios to review, but that's in the past. Um, they just do a really good job of support. If you got yours from another person, you can actually go to Bridgecom Systems and purchase what they call Bridgecom University, which is a series of a whole bunch of videos that walk you through how to handle it. This particular question you have is a little interesting and makes me wonder where this radio originally came from. Um, the vendors in China want to sell their radios around the world. And they used to sell them entirely open. Uh, so you could use them on pretty much any frequency, VHF or UHF. And it is an issue because uh, people who don't know what they're doing get hold of these and start using them on public service frequencies on uh, the GMRS or family radio service that requires, um, you know, certain features about the radios or even on uh, federal disaster response frequencies. Uh, not good. So what they have done more, what they have done recently is uh, put into the radio the options for a bunch of countries and then you need to pick the option that works best for your country. This should be done for you before you get the radio but if it is not um, he calls them uh, codes here. Um, what I have seen on the Redivus radios is that they've got a whole bunch of things. The radio can be set up to be just GMRS or it can be the uh, uh, UHF CB that is in Australia or it can be you know ham radio but with European restrictions and there's one in there that's ham radio with US restrictions and that's the one that you want now like I said there's going to be a bunch for example if it's one 44 to 146 and uh, 440 to 450. This is European. Europe. Okay. 144 to 148 and 420 to 450 sometimes 430 to 450 
uh, you want the 420 if you can. This is US. This is what you want to set it up as. Okay, take that set right there. Now, you will make code plugs for your radio. Uh, if you purchased it from uh, Bridgecom Systems, you will find that they have a bunch of code plugs available that you can use. Or your local club might have code plugs available, but you got to have this set to accept that. Now, in part 95 of the FCC regulations, they talk about uh, what kind of uh, features radios must have. And they state in the U.S. that if a radio is capable of different bands, you cannot change this from the exterior of the radio. You have to go inside the radio. Uh, Redivis and others are interpreting this extremely liberally because all you have to do is push down on a couple keys at the same time you turn the radio on and you're right in the middle of being able to set these various things. That is not compliant with Part 95. But once you do that, the uh, radio, and by the way, that's an undocumented thing. You find it uh, on the internet. Um, and then the radio is supposed to be used. You can find all the different uh, things that you want here, but if you use the one that's 144 to 148 and 420 to 450, that's the U.S. set of bands, and so a standard code plug made for one of those 878s is uh, from one radio will just load right in to another. There are a number of ways of doing that, but the easiest way is to set up a, uh, the software on your computer, download from one radio and upload to another. Okay, That will clone the one radio into the other. Now, while you do that, you might want to save that so in case something happens and it uh, gets messed up. I mean, these radios are very software intensive. Uh, if something gets messed up, you can put the thing back in. Don't forget that your radio also does FM, so you can go into all the uh, traditional FM repeaters in, just, in addition to the DMR. Now, this radio is a DMR radio. However, if there are um, talk groups that you can go into on DMR that also come out on DSTAR and C4FM. So there are ways to cross connect uh, between the different types of digital modes. So it's a great radio. It's a nice little radio. It works really well. And it has just an unbelievable amount of memories and uh, you can put in very large code plugs um, and so on. Now, I, I won't go into how uh, the DMR works. Uh, other people have done that. Bridgecom has done that and so on. But uh, have fun with the radio. Okay, so there you have it. We have learned that uh, you can set that radio to the U.S. limits and then it should work with other code plugs that have been set up for radio set for U.S. limits. So, there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel financially, you may do so by going to dcastler.com support. And until we next meet, 73.